In this video presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to use the second derivative test to find the relative minimum and maximum of the function f of x equals x plus 1 over x. This is nice uh, for our first and second derivative test, but it gives an interesting new picture of this because we can pretty much use the second derivative test to determine the max and minimum. So let's dive right in and let's see how to solve this problem. First, we're going to need the first derivative because you can't find the second derivative without the first. So this is 1 minus 1x one to the negative 2. And then the second derivative is going to be equal to positive 2x to the negative third. And we're going to want to set this equal to 0 and then solve. So we have 2 over x to the third equals 0. That's not a very helpful equation right there. It's actually kind of difficult to find something like this because this is telling us that we're going to have a vertical asymptote at 0 and we're not going to cross the x-axis otherwise. However, just because this is going to be a little bit more difficult doesn't mean that it's going to be impossible. Even though we can't solve uh, the second derivative for 0, we do know something. That anywhere you have a vertical asymptote, that's going to be part of your range. So we'll set up our table from negative infinity to 0 and from 0 to positive infinity. Basically, we're going to treat our vertical asymptote like it's a critical point in our second derivative test. So I'll pick a value, say negative 1 and positive 1, and we'll put that into our derivative there, into our second derivative. 2 over negative 1 to the third is equal to negative 2. And then 2 over positive 1 to the third is pretty clearly going to be equal to positive. So we're going to have concave down from negative infinity to 0, and we're going to have concave up from 0 to positive infinity. Okay, so we know we're going to have to have some type of, well, we assume we're going to have some type of minimum on this interval and maximum on this interval. We don't have quite enough information to determine that yet. So we're going to actually have to go back to our first derivative and set that equal to 0 to get some critical points out of this. So I'll have 1 minus 1 over x squared equals 0. So 1 over x squared equals 1. Or x squared equals 1. And this gives us x is equal to plus or minus 1. So now we have critical points occurring at negative 1 and positive 1. Well, there's your minimum and there's your maximum. Because we know that they're not inflection points. So they... And... All your critical points have to be either extremum or they have to be inflection points. We know we don't have any inflection points because there is no way to solve the second derivative for zero, which means both of these have to be extremum. So we have a maximum occurring at x equals negative 1, and we have a minimum occurring at x equals positive 1. And that's the problem.